Well, I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by the APS President, uh, Dr. Michael Turner. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Appreciate that. It's a fantastic event, isn't it, this March meeting? It is. This is uh, the biggest physics meeting that I know of, and uh, almost 10,000. Uh, the APS has 50,000 members, so roughly 20% of them are here. Um, an exciting part about it is almost half of them are early career scientists, undergraduates, graduate students, postdocs. And this is a really important meeting for them because they can present, they can meet uh, the people who will give them their jobs, and they can even find jobs. What are you most looking forward to this week? Um, oh, there's so much. Well, tonight uh, I have the high honor of giving out the prizes and awards. Uh, Wednesday night we have the Kavli session uh, where we talk about how forefront physics uh, is applying, is uh, helping to solve real world problems. And then on Thursday we have the, uh, the Nobel laureate session where the 2012 Nobel Prize winners in physics will be giving lectures. There's a real sense of vibrancy at uh, this meeting and uh, I think within uh, physics as a, as, a, as a whole, but what do you put that down to? Well, I think. Number one, science as a whole, people recognize that science is so important uh, to solving the world's problems. Uh, it's the key to innovation, uh, and innovation is the key to economic well-being. And physics is right in there because uh, it's contributing at all different levels in terms of new materials, uh, instrumentation for other fields, Ex discoveries that are very abstract about the universe. My own favorite is dark energy. I'm a cosmologist that uh, awe the public. And so, I mean, this is a very good sign for science. Everybody recognizes the importance of science. I mean, one of the interviews I did, I know you put a lot of effort into young people and uh, undergraduates and, and, and such. One of the interviews I did this morning was absolutely fascinating for me. It showed the passion that uh, a lot of young people have for physics now. Absolutely. People are very excited about the discoveries they're making, the problems they're solving. Uh, and I think that you, you put your finger on it. Uh, the bellwether for the future of the field is the young people. And so if you have enthusiastic young people, uh, your field is healthy. And physics does. Let's talk about your presidency of the APS. What's top of your agenda? You know, if, if I had a highest level theme uh, my theme would be to make sure that this field is as exciting and fulfilling uh, for the young people of today as it was for me. I mean, I think that's the, the most important duty of the APS president, is watching out for, for the next generation of scientists and making sure that they have a, a, a good experience. That might not be as exciting, but it's, uh, it's very important for the future. Let's talk about what's going on on Capitol Hill at the moment with the sequester. Uh, how important is that to you? Well, I think it's important not just to me, not just to physicists, but the nation. Because uh, basic research, particularly physics, is critical to the future of our nation. And the sequester as it stands will cut the funding for basic research because it's just a, it's a meat cleaver, as, as people have said. And um, we, we need to protect the investment in the future if we're to be successful. And so uh, last week we, we sent out an action alert to our members to have them call their senators to uh, uh, try to influence them and remind them how important research is to the future of the nation and that when we get put together a budget for 2013, here we're almost halfway through 2013 and we don't have a full budget yet, that, that they, they uh, protect the funding for science. Um, and I would say the, the, the number one reason that we want to protect it is the nation, but the number two reason is really the young scientists, is that we don't want to discourage uh, the next generation of scientists who say, oh, things are, we're going to get over this. We're going to get over this. But uh, we want to make sure that uh, we don't lose the best and the brightest in the process. And do you think that message is getting across? You know, what's crazy about the current situation, I know, I know you, you would like to, someone to explain it to you and give you understanding. We don't have any understanding here, is that both the Republicans and the Democrats agree how important the funding of basic research is. And so you might think that therefore it would be easy to just go forward and say, okay, let's take that one 
and keep it level or increase it a little bit. But um, it's such a mess in Washington that even things that everyone agrees on, people have a hard time getting done. But as you say, we'll get over it. I, I believe we'll get over it because of the importance of, of uh, physics and the grand opportunities uh, that we have ahead, be it in new materials or in discovering new phases of matter or learning about the deepest inner workings of uh, how the universe works on the small scales or the large scales. It's an exciting time. It is indeed. Well, Dr. Turner, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. It's been great talking to you, so thank you very thank much. Thank you.